Now it's time for On Point, where we speak to experts to delve deeper into some of the key issues in the spotlight right now. South Korean domestic films are smashing the local box office right now, and the most popular, with almost 5 million tickets sold, is Hansan Rising Dragon. Second is Emergency Declaration, which had actually been the top movie for a couple of days recently as well. That's right, and another film that's expected to top the chart soon is Hunt, which opened just two days ago with high ticket reservations. So with the weekend coming up here in South Korea, let's turn to Professor Kim Kyung-hyun of the East Asian Studies Department of UC Irvine to discuss South Korea's latest releases. Good afternoon for you. Good morning for you. Yeah. Well, first, let's talk about Hansan. It's already been a few weeks since it opened, but its popularity hasn't died down. What is it about the movie that's most appealing, especially for Koreans? Well, especially for Koreans, there has to be uh, nationalism, right? Um, it's probably number one reason that people are going to go see this movie. Uh, but nationalism itself probably is not something, the, the only reason. I think that there is uh, a way in which is packaged. Um, I think that draws a lot of attention to it. Um, so there's a line I, when I was watching the movie that caught my attention, there's a, uh, you know, probably the most important line that Lee Sun-shin actually utters in the movie is when he's asked the question, is it a battle between two nations? Uh, and he says, no, right? Uh, the war of uh, 1592 is uh, a battle between, I don't know, righteousness and, 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 and non-righteousness. So, that's how it's packaged. Uh, it's not a war of uh, nations, but it's in between between values. What is just and unjust, or you know, uh, invasion versus uh, self determination. So you know, you can think about all the kind of allegories that it can you know the movie reaches out to, including the war in Ukraine and so on and so forth. And it also speaks to the present day contemporary you know Korean. Uh, political situation that Koreans find themselves in. So really, Professor, it does uh, resonate very strongly with South Koreans, but how well do you think it would do uh, in global bo box offices? Well, um, I, I mean, I enjoyed it, uh, but probably because I'm Korean national, right, um, that I enjoyed it a lot more. I think uh, in, in the context of, again, global uh, cinema, is probably won't reach uh, maximum kind of an appeal. Uh, you know, there, there are a couple of things. I mean, historical context in which, you know, the film tries to sell itself uh, is really undersold in the, in the global context. Not many people outside of Korea and Japan understand the implications of, you know, 1592 to, to me, the invasion. Also, um, you know, if you think about, I mean, this is, I think, maybe even a bigger reason not once did it actually produce a laughter for me, right? The entire movie. And and I think the ways in which, you know, American cinema or, or, or Hollywood global dominance has able to stretch out its value of humor in movies, I think has made people uh, become aware of blockbuster heroes to be less austere and, you know, maybe less serious and less strict. Easy to is, I, to me, is, is, is a great character. Uh, he's got all the qualities of leaders, uh, courage, decisiveness, and I don't know, um, you know, intellectual faculty that, that he uh, exercises. But at the same time, you got to have humor. Uh, and I just didn't see him again. Uh, yeah, I mean, as a, as a leader, he's great. But is he as a date? You know, is he exciting? No. I mean, it's got to be the most boring date, right? And so I think uh, there's a gap in which Koreans sell its movies, and maybe Hollywood sells its movies. Right. Um, so now let's move on to a new hit that could be a hit coming out uh, that's already been released actually by now. Uh, were you able to watch The Hunt? Uh, it's Squid Game star Lee Jung-jae directed the film. And of course, the co-star of the film, Jung Sung, is also very famous. Do you see it really uh, reaching the maximum potential? Yeah, well, I mean, this this movie. Prob I, mean, I didn't see the movie because I, I, I wasn't in Korea. I'm I'm here in uh, the U.S. and um, exposure to Korean movies before they release. It's very limited. Uh, but um, I think uh, it probably will reach a bigger audience, uh, just because I think the political context or the the, the cultural context in which the film actually is made deals with 
I don't know, the espionage, the North Korea and South Korea confrontation division, all of those things, I think, had a way of becoming better heads overseas, right? I mean, starting with Shiri in 1999 and Joint Security Area, JSA, in uh, 2000. And so it, it takes us to that familiar kind of, I don't know, climate um, hunt. And uh, I feel just as uh, much as those movies, and, and you know, there's been plethora of those movies, right, that deals with not only Korean division, but, you know, Korean war. Uh, Taeguk Ishimido, uh, Spy, you know, more recently, Spy Gone North. I mean, they've done, you know, generally better uh, overseas than other Korean movies. So uh, in that context, it's probably going to reach a wider audience. It's my speculation. I haven't seen the movie, so you know, it's very difficult to say whether it's going to be successful or not. But Right. Well, I, it does sound like a thumbs up from you for Hunt and uh, maybe for some Korean culture fans as for Han Tan, right? So I'm afraid due to time just as well, we'll have to uh, wrap up this interview. But thank you so much for your insights today, Professor, and we look forward to connecting with you again. Thank you.